if you're watching Worcester, you owe me some blue roll as well. So it's Saturday morning and I've got this little thing to repair up here. What we've got, that's pipe, and it's leaking where it goes to the copper. So I've got a new, a new adapter I need to install. It actually goes onto a T, but it's capped off just past there. So we're going to do away with the dead leg and then connect back onto this cold in the box in. Um, so yeah, we, hopefully we've got all the right stuff and uh, we'll get the water chain off and crack on. What I'm going to do is cut it back here and put a, a new adapter. Sorry about the flashing light. But I can't really get a, I think it's recommended to use like a wheel cutter on them. But I can't really get one in, so I'm just going to use a fine blade in my hacksaw and just cut it there. So I'm just getting my hacksaw blade in there. I need to really use two hands because I need to hold it against myself, but the pipe is sucking in now. So that's a good sign. We've had to have a bit of a change of plan because that's a poly York pipe, it's not Jira pipe. It was really hard to see to be fair, so wherever my fitting's gone, it doesn't fit. Uh, I don't know where it's gone, but it doesn't fit the pipe. Um, so yeah, these universal couplers, they go from, it will fit 25 to, it fit, sorry, 21 to 27, and they're suitable for like stainless steel, um, ABS pipe, galvanized iron, lead. So you can pretty much use them on anything, so they do get you out the muck. So all we're gonna do is go from that to 22 copper, and then we just bought a new piece. Sorry about the flick when it's the light. We just bought a new piece of 22 copper across, and then just made, put a new lever valve in the, in the box in. So hopefully that'll get us out of the muck on a Saturday morning, to be fair. So that'll just clamp straight on there, into the 22 pipe, and then across, and that'll be job sorted then, hopefully. Sometimes you can only do what you can do just to get yourself out of the, uh, out of the muck, as they say, but it should be fine. That's the fitting I was gonna use. It just doesn't fit the pipe. It's not far off, but no good, unfortunately. So I've made that up onto the poly York. That fitting there takes me to 22 copper, which will just, Hopefully, be able to get that in. Don't want to move that pipe too much, but that will just slide, slide back in, tighten that up, and then that should be job done. Hopefully, so we've just got the water back on. There's no leaks on the on the uh, poly York pipe anyway. So we're just bleeding it through this basin. We'll have to have a good tidy up, obviously. But there was quite a lot of water damage from before anyway. Right, I've just got the water back on, it's not leaking on my poly York. Um, just bleeding it through this, through this basin. There's probably quite a lot of air in the system, we'll just turn it off a second. But yeah, there's uh, no leaks, so we're golden. So we're just gonna get a clip out of the van, put it on there, and uh, yeah, that should be fine. They'll have to put some new ceiling tiles up or whatnot. But apart from that, there's not too much more you can do with it. The reason I put a drain off tap on the bottom is because when you fill up and get a leak, it's nice and, e nice and easy to fix. Hopefully, if that's the only one we've got on the job, we've done well, because there's quite a bit of pipe work on in this. But yeah, nobody's perfect, and as I always say, if you're not paddling, you're not plumbing. So we'll get that one sorted, and uh, move on to the next. All right, I've just got that one sweated back up at the top. Um, go for a take two. We've got all the hot and cold filled up, no problem, and we're just filling the heating up now. So, what are we on? I know we're in a really dark corner. The electrician's doing the fuse board, so we've got no lights or power. So we'll hopefully pressurise it up to about one, one and a half bar and then we'll go in and make sure we've got no leaks. Everything in the house was pressure tested, it was just this stuff that wasn't. So hopefully should be fine. We've got one or two bits left to finish off on this system yet anyway. And uh, yeah, we don't want no more surprises. I've just had an absolute nightmare, probably partly through my own fault. I obviously haven't connected the PRV in yet and I've obviously decided to fill up, but... I didn't realise the pressure was getting so high because the gauge on the boiler is not moving. So obviously we've got a faulty gauge, it's not moved an inch, but I can guarantee you there's, there must be at least three bar pressure in there because that has just decided to absolutely let, let off, which is... I've never had a faulty gauge. Obviously I was stood here watching the gauge filling up on my fill loop and um, yeah, I was like, what's that noise? What's that noise? And it's just like completely let go, which is not brilliant. Obviously I should have connected it up outside or out through to the outside wall, but it's sort of the thing you do last, obviously you sand and cement it and then you pressure gauge and stuff, you don't really expect that to happen, but it is what it is, it's happened, so obviously I'll have to get a new gauge for the boiler, or get Worcester out and they can come and do that, because it's not my boiler, that's their problem. 
Um, so yeah, obviously I'll have to dry up now. And uh, the trouble is, I really wanted to leave it with the pressure gauge on, so I don't know if it got a leak on the system, but it kind of is what it is. Obviously, my valves and my magnet clean and everything are open, but it's not really a problem I've had before. This PRV is still peeing out. I don't know if you can... Yeah, look. And that is the gauge is still on zero. So that tells me there's um, there's a little bit more than uh, that pressure in there. I don't know why that's not reading. I honestly don't know. It's all connected in. It goes onto that port there. I've never ever had that on one of these. But I don't know. Everything you buy nowadays gets worse, don't it really? What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my own pressure gauge on the system just to prove that that is faulty. Obviously, I'm going to get the PRV connected up. But as I say, I've never seen that where the gauge gauge doesn't move. I was just merrily filling away, waiting for Jacob to shout if we've got any leaks, and that just let go and it went off big style. So I'll get that cut in and uh, get it filled back up. What I'm going to do is just put a pressure gauge on that, it's the easiest way. So got them two valves off, we just let the pressure go at that pipe. I probably all missed my tray. Typical, not too bad though. And we'll just get, just get that cut in. I'm just going to put a half inch um, pressure gauge on there just for the time being. So I've just had to use a couple of bushes, uh, but we're just going to temporarily put one on there just so we can see what the pressure actually is. Doesn't have to be mega tight, it won't leak, he says. That should be fine. So we can turn them two valves on. It's all connected to the system. Which way is that? That valve stiff as hell. I can't even turn that. And um, yeah, you can see, look, shot straight up. So there's actually there's actually two and a half bar in the system. So that gauge on the boiler is definitely faulty. What we'll do is just leave that at two and a half bar and then we'll go and have a look inside. I don't think anything's majorly leaking. Obviously, it'll drop straight away at that sort of pressure. And um, yeah, hopefully, we'll just leave it. I say it might drop a little bit because we've gone a little bit high with the pressure, it's not unusual, but so a little bit of lagging to finish off under there. We actually ran out, but we need to just finish that. There's bits to finish anyway on the job, but it's just, just a case of making sure there weren't any leaks, getting everything filled up. And uh, yeah, a bit disappointed with that boiler really because that gauge caught me off guard. I know the light's terrible in here, but I don't think we've got any leaks now. I did have that one up the top. Guilty as charged on that one, I'm afraid. Um, but that one definitely won my fault. I know I haven't got the PRV connected in. It is on the to-do list. I've just been super busy. Um, but it will get done. I'm probably going to do that next, actually. And then I'll give Worcester a call and see if they can come fix their boiler. Because I'm not too sure what's wrong with it. Obviously, we're showing zero pressure. There's no valves in between the, the boiler and the system, if that makes sense. There's nothing you can valve off on that. It's just... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't think it'd be blocked. It's a brand new system, so... Yeah, weird one. If you're watching Worcester, you owe me some blue roll as well. I highly doubt you are. But yeah, still showing zero on that. Two and a half bar at the other one. I'll get the PRV done next anyway. I should have done it, I suppose. But the you don't expect the gauge to be faulty. I think, we all, I think we've all done it where we've... Um, where we've filled up before connecting the PRV in. Which is uh, probably not good practice, but as I say, sometimes when you're working... You only do what you need to do to survive sometimes. So yeah, we'll get that drilled through, get that connected in, and I'll give Worcester a call and they can come out and fix that because that ain't my problem. So I'm just getting this PRV drilled from outside in. Not a bad guess for a start, just a little bit too high, probably 20 mil too high, but bang in the right place. Uh, so what I'll do is just drill through with a, probably go through with like a 28 mil bit and then just leave it, to be honest with you. Because it helps if you've got a little bit of movement on your pipe anyway, if you ever have to disconnect it. I've drilled a big enough hole so I can just solder that up out of position and then it will just push down onto my PRV. It'll just make it so much easier if you ever have to replace that in the future. Obviously, I need to have a good tidy up behind there because it got a bit wet. So, yeah, we'll get that soldered, get it connected, and then that's that's safe then. You've just got to watch on these plastic threads that you don't cross thread them. It's so easy, and I've done it before. I think that's actually going on crossed. Give it a little turn. Super tricky at the back of the boiler. I think it might still be crossed that. Obviously I've got my washer in, I just don't want to cross the, uh, I think, is that gone? can't honestly tell, it has crossed. 
sometimes I'll need it. It's just I'm pretty sure that's okay. We'll give it a nip up. We'll soon find out. That's all connected in. It wasn't cross threaded. I think there was just some muck in the threads. So I just got to solder a couple of elbows or turn it back to the wall on the outside. And uh, yeah, they're not too bad to replace these. Nearly dropped my grips down the side. That'd have been a disaster. All you do is pull the pin out and they do pop out. So they're not too bad. They're just a little bit tricky. But as I say, if you drill your hole bigger, it makes it easier for the next guy because he ain't got to struggle to move the pipe.